Hey everyone, today we are going to do something that you will really love. We are going to have another long video that is going to be full of value. Passive income is the best invention of life. What could be better than making money while you're sleeping, traveling, and enjoying quality time with your family? That's why we have so many videos on how to build passive income. But for this video, we have chosen our best passive income videos and turned them into one single video. If you want to build passive income, then you absolutely must watch this video. There is going to be a table of contents in the description so you can skip to the parts that you want to learn or come back and rewatch them again. It is going to be a really long video. So grab a drink and some snacks and most importantly, give this video a thumbs up and enjoy the video. Around 4,000 years ago, in a kingdom in ancient Mesopotamia, there was a guy named Arcade who was poor, like he could barely put food on the table. To escape poverty, he worked hard. However, when he received the payment for his service, he lived very frugally and lent most of his income to a shield maker, who then paid interest on the loan. Instead of spending that interest to move to a bigger place, he kept living frugally and lent that interest to another shield maker thus growing his wealth even more. After repeating this process for years, his wealth grew so big that he did not have to work again, since his money was working for him. So, he ended up as the richest man in Babylon. Of course, you can't lend money to a shield maker, because that shield maker probably has a credit card or would rather go to a bank than look for you. But that story illustrates the power of passive income. Nothing is more powerful than when your money makes more money. It saves you time, effort, and provides you with financial support to pay all of your bills. But very few people achieve that milestone where their money works for them and not the other way around. Chasing money is not a bad idea, but chasing money your entire life isn't also a great idea either, because you need time for other things in your life. That's why I try my best to create as many sources of income as possible, but most importantly, make them as efficient as possible. The most famous passive income source is rental income. You have a property that's rented out, and then the tenant keeps sending you a check every month. Since real estate is not cheap, that check could be big enough to pay all of your bills. But what if you don't have the money to buy real estate? Of course, you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy a property. All that you need is enough for the down payment. The rest will be covered by your tenant. Even if the property doesn't generate income in the first year or so, it will in the future once rent prices rise year after year. But real estate isn't the only place where you can build passive income. In the 21st century, there are far more tools than most people know. So in this video, I want to share with you some real passive income ideas that you can implement right now. And most importantly, you don't need a lot of money to start. At number one, we have vending machines. When we talk about passive income, we never mention vending machines because they don't sound as exciting as real estate, for example. But if you think about it, it's that kind of an asset that provides a constant stream of income and requires minimum effort if you automate it. There were 5 million vending machines in the US in 2015. These 5 million vending machines produce an average of $20 billion in sales each year. But most vending machines earn around $5 a week, because it's not an easy business, like any other business. If your property is placed in a bad neighborhood, it will probably turn into a liability. But a well-placed vending machine can earn far more than that potentially exceeding $100 per week or even hundreds of dollars per day. The challenge is to pick the right place and sell the right product. If you place it somewhere where there aren't many people, it's going to be one of those machines that earn $5 a week. But if it's in the highly visible location where it will regularly attract buyers, that's when you can expect a few hundred dollars from it every week. It requires a lot of work in the beginning, but minimum management later. Isn't that the meaning of passive income? Before getting into this space, I highly recommend everyone to study it farther, because you have to understand what kind of product sells the best, what vending machines turn the highest profit, and what type of locations attract more buyers. At number two, we have print-on-demand businesses. 
10 years ago, this business was impossible. It just became mainstream recently, so it still has a lot of room to grow. You know, some businesses are so old that it's nearly impossible to get in and succeed because they're so crowded, but that's not the case with print-on-demand businesses. The global market for custom t-shirt printing industry is expected to cross $10 billion by 2025. T-shirts are cheap to source, have universal appeal, and are relatively cheap to customize. But it's a competitive field since there aren't many barriers to entry. If you want to compete with Tesla, for example, you need tens of billions of dollars to build electric cars. But if you want to start selling in-demand T-shirts, you need nothing except a good idea because there are multiple platforms that can take care of everything, starting from delivery to management. Your job is to design and sell. Whenever I see someone wearing a t-shirt with something cool written on it, I want one as well. So if you have a good taste, you can spend some time designing cool t-shirts on Teespring, Printful or any other platform and run some ads. If people find your designs desirable, it will turn into passive income where you can keep selling your t-shirts with minimum effort. You can come up with new design every 3-4 to four months to sell another t-shirt to your existing clients. Number 3. Rates or Real Estate Investment Trust Rates are popular among investors who want to invest in real estate but don't want to deal with management. Of course, renting a property is great, but it requires some management. So there are firms such as American Tower or Brandywine Reality Trust that invest in office buildings, for example, in Philadelphia, Washington DC or Austin. Rates are traded in the stock market like any other company, but usually they offer a much higher dividend rate. For example, Brandywine Reality Trust offers a 5.5% dividend rate. That is incredibly high. But you have to understand that their stock price doesn't increase much. Most of the money you're going to make out of this company is from dividends. There are a lot of different rates. Some of them invest in commercial properties, others in residential areas, some just own land across the country, and so on. The high dividend yield is what makes them so good as a passive income candidate. But be careful with them, because if you invest in the wrong rate, you might lose your investment at the cost of high dividends. So, pay attention to how the trust has been performing over the last few years at least. Number 4. Rent a room on Airbnb If you have an extra room in your house that you do not use much, renting it on Airbnb is the way to go. With Airbnb, you will most likely rent it twice higher than renting it on a long-term basis. Of course, Airbnb means a lot of management because you need to clean the room, make sure it has all the necessities before every guest comes in, but nevertheless, it's a great source of income. And since your guest is going to stay in the next room, your guest won't ruin your room. Some people even take a mortgage and let Airbnb tenants pay off their mortgage. It's a great way to build wealth over time. Of course, with COVID, it has become much more difficult, but I have no doubt that things will get back to normal because we humans are social creatures. We can't just be isolated. We want to travel, we want to see new places, we want to move around. We've been doing this since the beginning of human existence. And finally, the last idea is invest in a small business as a silent partner. When we talk about starting a business, we usually mean starting a huge business, but there are plenty of small businesses that could be very profitable, such as a corner shop or a barber shop. Of course, running a corner shop is a full-time job, but it could be turned into passive income if you join the business as a silent partner. In business, there is a concept called silent partner, where you don't deal with the day-to-day -day management of the business, but rather play more of an advisory role. These type of businesses do not need a huge capital, and their business model is pretty simple. You don't have to be a genius to find out how to start a profitable corner shop. Just take a look at what others have done. You might go 50-50 with someone else who is going to run the business on a day-to-day basis and will get a fixed salary for it, but you're going to have a constant stream of income. But it's important that your numbers work out on paper at least before starting anything in this field because it's an investment eventually. I did not include traditional passive income sources because we've talked about them in previous videos. But if you think about it, there are far more options than most people think about at first thought. And now it's your turn to let me know what's your favorite passive income source. Let me know in the comments below. How many crypto millionaires are there in the world? Just take a guess. 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 
In fact, you can stop the video and write down your guess in the comment section. Let's see if you can guess it right. According to the cryptocurrency data tracking firm BitInfo Charts, there are over a hundred thousand people who have at least a million dollars or more stashed in Bitcoin. That figure was up from just 25,000 Bitcoin millionaires four months ago. And a year ago, there were only 15,000 Bitcoin millionaires. Imagine if we count in all other millionaires who hold different kind of cryptos such as Ethereum, Dogecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Stella and many more. I think there are a few hundred thousand of them. But you know what I like more than Bitcoin? Passive income. When you put the work up front and then enjoy the cash flow that comes in afterwards. Of course, it might need a little management, but overall, with minimum amount of effort, you can keep receiving that paycheck every month or every week. It might seem like you need a lot of money to build at least one or two sources of passive income, but not today. I mean, people are creating wealth out of nowhere, like in the case of cryptos. What makes you think that you can't build at least one if you have an internet connection? So let me share with you five passive income ideas that you can implement right now, right after watching this video. It doesn't matter if you have a full-time job or if you don't have a lot of money. These passive income ideas can be implemented literally by anyone. So if you're ready, all you have to do is give this video a thumbs up, just crush the like button and let's start with the first one. License your pictures. In the age of the internet, you can monetize pretty much anything, even your pictures. You probably have heard this a million times, but I'm going to give you a practical way to turn your pictures into passive income. This is not a scam, although it sounds like one. You see, content creators have to come up with content, and not everyone is ready to go and shoot videos or create illustrations such as this one. So our team, for example, relies on external sources to get these illustrations. Others use video footages or pictures to create videos such as Business Casual, Economics Explained, or even our second channel, Bloom. And we use tools such as Shutterstock, for example, to get these images. All you have to do is upload your pictures or videos to this website. And whenever someone would use your picture, you're going to get paid a small commission. In fact, you can start uploading the exact same pictures you have on your Instagram. It doesn't matter if they are pictures of your own or nature. As long as they look decent, you can give them a try. You're going to create passive income out of thin air. But what if you're not a fan of pictures? What if you don't take pictures all the time? Or you're just bad at taking pictures? Well, don't worry, because you can monetize your ideas. Sounds too good to be true. Before you jump into conclusions, let me explain. You're probably interested in something. It could be financial education, stock market, college, art, doesn't matter. There is at least one thing you're interested in. But what if I told you that instead of just sharing your ideas or opinions or knowledge with your friends over a drink on Friday night, you can share them with the world and monetize them. That's what blogging is. You don't necessarily have to make videos. I get it. It takes time, money and effort. But writing down your thoughts is easy. Just set up a website and turn your ideas into articles such as this one and put some ads on your website through Google AdSense. Every time someone opens your article, they would come across an ad and you're going to get paid a small commission for every ad that appears on your blog, which could turn into thousands of dollars if enough people would read your blog. Another way to monetize your blog is through affiliate marketing. If your blog is about fitness, for example, because you're trying to lose weight and build some muscles, in your blog, you might recommend some protein shakes or apps that would help you to track your calories, for example, or help you exercise more effectively. Pretty much every service has an affiliate program, which means you can get paid anything from 1% to 10 or even 20% if someone uses your link to buy that product. If someone would read your blog and would get value out of it, they would definitely use your link to buy that product since you have established trust with them. Every time I talk about books, for example, I make sure that I put affiliate links down in the description. So those of you who are interested in buying that book, you can do that using my links and we will get a small commission that will help us to grow the channel. You're not going to overpay. That company, or in this case, Amazon, would share with us a tiny percentage of the sale for driving the traffic to the store. 
Of course, with one or two links you aren't going to go far, but imagine if you have dozens of articles or dozens of links. You might drive hundreds if not thousands of people, and that small commissions will turn into a decent amount of money over a month. Number 4. Put some ads on your car. It sounds like a joke, but there is actually a way to make money by putting ads on your car. It's so weird that there are so many ways you can make money today through ads. What an age are we living in? Think about it. You drive your car anyway. You might drive every morning to your office, drop your kids at school, or just hit the hypermarket to do your groceries. Why not let your car generate some income while you're doing that? I know that putting ads on your car seems like too much. You might feel a bit uncomfortable, but who cares? You are earning money. And in case if you get tired of that, you can get rid of it whenever you want. You can expect to earn anything from $100 to $500 per month. Especially if you have a car loan, it is going to pay for your car. But be careful because there are a lot of scammers in this industry. It's going to take you some time to find a proper company that's willing to put ads on your car, but then you can forget about it while you will get a few hundred dollars every single month for just driving your car. And finally, government bonds. This is probably the easiest and the safest source of passive income. It doesn't require any skills or even effort. You're basically going to loan your money to the government, and in return, the government is going to pay you interest for that. The government is going to take your money and spend it on the infrastructure or schools and so on to improve the productivity of the citizens and in return their income would rise and they will pay more taxes which the government is going to use to pay you back. But you don't have to wait for the government to pay you back, you can simply sell it in the secondary market. Government bonds vary from 3 months to 30 years, the longer the period is, the higher the interest. 10-year-old bonds, which are the most popular ones, have a yield of 1.61% now, which is not that high. But you have to understand that interest rates are extremely low right now. So do government bonds. When the Fed is going to raise the rates, bond rates will rise as well. It might not be the best option now, but it will be in the coming future because sooner or later, interest rates will be raised. At least it's much better option than keeping your money in a bank that doesn't pay even a 1% interest. But on the other hand, it's a safe investment. What are the chances that the US government will go bankrupt? Pretty low if not zero, since the US government is the source of dollar. So if you want a safe passive income that doesn't require any effort, then government bonds are your ideal option. There are hundreds if not thousands of ways to create passive income, especially in the age of internet. You might not be able to implement all of them, but you can at least try one of them. When you think of the stock market, the first thing that comes into mind is this complicated world of the stock market. With so many confusing charts, it's easy to get lost. But what everyone knows for sure is that you can buy stocks and sell them whenever they rise. But there is another way that professional investors used to make a fortune. In 2018, Warren Buffett received $3.8 billion in cash from his five major investments. Don't get me wrong, he didn't sell his shares to earn that much. But instead, these five companies earned a ton of money during the year. And since Warren Buffett is an investor in these companies, they had to share with him their profits. That's called dividends. Simply put it, there are two types of companies in the stock market. Companies that have already matured and have profitable and sustainable business models. So whenever they make a profit, they don't know what to do with that money. Therefore, they end up sending it to their shareholders. On the other side, you have companies who are still trying to turn a profit, like Tesla. They might report a profit, but the company needs that money to grow farther. So here is a question we will try to answer in this video. How many stocks you have to buy or how much you have to invest in the stock market so that you receive $1000 from your investment every single month without selling your stocks at all? But before we do that, we have to understand a few key concepts. How dividends work? what are the best dividend stocks, and how to avoid the dividend trap that might lead you to lose your entire investment.
Since the dot-com bubble, the nature of investing has changed. Before that, investors' main concern was to invest in companies that would turn a profit and share these profits with them since, as shareholders, they are entitled to the company's profits. But entrepreneurs such as Jeff Bezos stepped in and completely changed the game. The goal was no longer to maximize profits, but rather grow the company even if that means not paying a dime in dividends to shareholders. A company that only burns cash and isn't profitable looks like a bad business. But the strategy is to keep operating at a loss until you dominate the entire industry and then generate profits since you will be the only player in the market. And that's what Amazon did for the last 25 years. Despite its $1.6 trillion valuation, it never paid a dime in dividends to its shareholders. In fact, it avoided taxes for two decades since it was reporting a loss. In 2019, it turned $11.5 billion in net income while its competitor Walmart generated $15.2 billion and paid $2.16 in dividends per share. But at the end of the day, Walmart was valued at one-third of an Amazon. Amazon might seem like a more promising stock in the future, but if you want passive income, Walmart looks like a better option. And the stock market is filled with such examples. There are just a handful of tech companies that pay dividends. The rest, especially the big ones, would rather reinvest what they have earned instead of paying you. While stocks that pay high dividends are extremely seductive, they aren't always the best option. In fact, dividends sometimes are used to mislead investors and rip them off. The stock might be on the verge of bankruptcy or it might be barely surviving. Its stock price has been falling year after year. So one way to make its stock attractive to investors is by offering high dividends. Tech Universal Corporation or UVV for example. If you take a look at its dividend rate, you will see a ratio of 7.16%. That's unimaginably high. You probably won't find anything like that in the entire market. Even world's largest company Apple pays around 2% in dividends. But I personally would not invest in this company and wouldn't advise anyone else to do that. The stock price was around $50 5 years ago and you might imagine that it might have grown slightly since then at least. But it didn't. The price fell to $43 and the company doesn't seem to have any future. So it pays high dividends to keep its stock attractive to investors because who knows where else the stock price might be a few years from now. Compare that to Apple that pays only 2% in dividends, but the stock price rose by 337% in the same period. Cash flow is great, but losing your principal is bad, and the stock market is filled with such examples. So don't choose to buy stocks solely because it has the highest dividend yield. You might be wondering by now that are there any good companies that are both growing and paying high dividends? The answer is, yeah, there are. Take Coca-Cola for example. The company exists since 1886 and it began paying dividends before you probably were born. It has quite a good dividend rate of 3.2%. Of course, the stock price hasn't been growing as some of the tech companies because many believe that there aren't much left for Coca-Cola to grow, but it's definitely not going to fall the next day. The Home Depot is another example. They've been paying a dividend yield of 2.5% consistently. The stock price doubled in the last five years. Johnson & Johnson has been around since 1886 and is regarded as the king of dividends. It is a big name in the pharmaceutical industry. It also plays a key role in developing the vaccine for the current pandemic. The stock price might just boom once the vaccine is ready. The companies that don't usually pay dividends are usually tech companies, since the idea behind it is that the company would be far better if it reinvests that money 
back and grows faster. Companies such as Google, Facebook and Tesla don't pay a dime in dividends, which is why investors love Apple. It's a tech company that both excels in hardware and software, it has a built-in ecosystem that provides it with a consistent cash flow, its stock price rises as much as other tech companies, but it also pays a dividend yield of around 2%. So let's try to answer the question, how much do you need to invest to make a thousand dollars a month? Well, since dividend yields are different from one stock to another and we don't want to invest in companies that don't seem to do great in the long run, we'll take into account companies that aren't only paying great dividends but also grow over time, such as Apple, Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, The Home Depot and so on. It's difficult to find an exact dividend yield since stock prices change every year, so does dividend yields. It also depends on the portfolio you built. But let's assume that you're going to get a 2.5% annually. To receive $1,000 of passive income, you need to invest around $500,000. That will provide you with $12,500 a year, or slightly higher than $1,000 a month. And suppose you want to make enough from dividends to retire completely, in that case, you need to invest at least $2 million to make $50,000 a year. I guess you aren't impressed, because investing half a million dollars in real estate for example would provide you a much higher passive income than $12,500. And that's why investors are more concerned about the stock price than dividends. Amazon might not have paid a dime in dividends, but its stock price rose by 522% in the last 5 years. Amazon investors have earned much more than any dividend investor could possibly imagine. Does that mean investing in dividend stocks is nonsense? Not really. If you have a big enough portfolio that invests in wide variety of stocks, making dividend stocks part of your portfolio is a good decision. But you also have to consider that these stocks are growing as well. So if you use these dividends to buy more stocks of the company, you will end up with a pretty good investment. The Home Depot stock price increased by 26% last year and it paid around 2.5% in dividends, which makes it a pretty appealing investment. On the other side, if you're just starting out with a small amount such as a few thousand dollars, you can't afford to buy a property to rent it out. So starting with dividend stocks might be an option to consider for some. Microsoft, the company that didn't only completely recover from the recent stock market crash, but is hitting a record high. With a valuation of $1.5 trillion, it seems like it will be one of the first companies to cross $2 trillion valuation. But how much your money would worth if you have invested just $1,000 in Microsoft's IPO? As of 2018, your $1,000 would have turned to $1.6 million. And in the last two years, the stock price more than doubled, so you would have earned much more than that. When you think about passive income, you probably imagine real estate and that type of income. But the stock market isn't just about the price of the stock, but also a way to earn passive income. When you buy a stock, you're literally becoming an owner of that company. One stock isn't going to give you that much influence over the company, but nevertheless, the company is obligated to share with you some of its profits. And that is called a dividend. Some companies pay a lot of dividends, others not that much. In the case of Microsoft, it's $2 per share, or a little over 1%. If that doesn't seem like a lot of money, let me tell you that some companies don't pay anything like Amazon or Facebook. Over many decades, Microsoft has proved itself to be one of the best investments ever. Its revenue has been increasing consequently every year, with $125 billion just last year. It's sitting on a cash pile of $136 billion, with no signs of slowing down. The company is founded on the basis of innovation. 
Despite the success of Mac, it's still widely dominating the computer market with Windows being almost on every computer. It even began producing its hardware in recent years. If you know anything about Amazon, you know that the backbone of its success is Amazon Web Services, where Amazon provides on-demand cloud computing platforms and it's controlling one-third of the market. But do you know who is the second biggest player in that market? Yup, you guessed it right, it's Microsoft. Although dividend yield isn't high at Microsoft, it's still there, and the company is growing at an unprecedented speed. I won't be surprised if it hits a $2 trillion valuation in the next 2-3 to three years. So if you want a super safe investment that's growing tremendously and pays constant dividends, you should be looking at Microsoft. The second on our list is Johnson & Johnson. You're definitely familiar with this company. In fact, it's one of the oldest companies out there. It's a huge medical business with multiple companies under its wing. Its products are on the shelves of every country all around the world. The stock price hasn't been growing as some of the tech companies out there, but it's the king of dividends. For over 57 years in a row now, it has been increasing its dividends and has been one of the safest investments you could make. Annually, they pay a dividend of $4 per stock which is a dividend yield of 2.75%. That's more than what some of the largest corporations pay. I know that some of you aren't impressed yet because that barely beats inflation. However, you have to consider that the safer the investment, the lower the returns are. It's also working on creating a vaccine for the current pandemic. If it succeeds, its stock price might soar as well. In the case of Johnson & Johnson, Historically speaking, for six decades, it hasn't just been paying dividends, but kept increasing them. So, if you're leaning on investing long term, Johnson & Johnson might be one of the safest passive income stocks out there. The third on our list is also a tech company. It's a company that manufactures your favorite smartphone. Yes, I'm talking about Apple. This company doesn't need an introduction, you probably know a lot about it. But let's take a look at its dividend yield. Currently it's a little lower than 1% or $3.28 per stock as of May 2020. Don't be scared by the fact that it has such a low dividend yield. The problem is that the stock price has been increasing so fast that you have to take a look at the context. For the last decade, Apple had a 2% yield. Sometimes it was higher, other times it was lower, but it was around 2%. And the company is in such a great shape that even after losing around 30% of its value due to the pandemic, it's back and is hitting a new record. Since the invention of the iPhone, the company's revenue kept increasing year after year. Even though the smartphone industry has stopped growing in recent years since it has reached its limits, the company still managed to keep its revenue at $260 billion last year. The company is focused now on taking over the budget phone sector with the introduction of iPhone SE. Of course, a $400 is still expensive, but Apple holds a brand name that people around the world value and are ready to pay the extra even if it's a budget phone. The pandemic illustrated to us that it's one of the safest companies in the world and nothing would stop it from growing. Even though it might be paying a dividend of just 2%, you can be confident that on the other side, the stock price is also increasing, making you wealthier. The next on our list is Lowe's, an American retail company specializing in home improvements. The company operates a chain of retail stores in the United States and Canada. And as of November 2018, Lowe's and its related businesses operate 2,000 home improvement and hardware stores in North America. It's the second largest chain in the US. Founded in 1921, it has been growing since then. If you take a look at the stock price, you realize that in the last five years, the stock price has doubled. Although it suffered tremendously due to the pandemic, like the companies we have mentioned previously, it recovered quickly. 
It was one of the first companies that suffered most by losing half of its value overnight. Currently, it has a dividend yield of 1.7% or $2.2 per share, which is not bad for such a stable and safe investment. These companies might not seem to have a high rate of return. However, we have to consider the fact that first of all, they are safe compared to the rest of the market, but more importantly, their stock is also growing. For instance, Lowe's stock in the last 12 months increased by 30%. It was also paying a dividend, so you're benefiting from the rise of the stock on one side and also having a passive income flowing into your pocket. On top of that, you're confident that your investments aren't going anywhere, since it's a strong company and the current pandemic is the proof of that. And finally, the Home Depot. The largest home improvement retailer in the United States, supplying tools, construction products and services. It operates many big boxes format stores across the United States and its territories of Guam and the US Virgin Islands all 10 provinces of Canada and 31 states and federal districts of Mexico. Compared to their rival Lowe's, it pays a higher dividend of $6 or 2.34%. In the last 5 years, the stock price has increased from $110 to $254 when writing the script. With strong financial statements and $110 billion in revenue last year, the company is looking forward to taking advantage of the digital world. The company has been investing in digital channels with One Home Depot initiative that it announced in December 2017. The dividends of these five companies might not seem impressive, but when we are talking about passive income, you want something safe, something you don't have to look after every single day. There are many companies that provide much higher dividend yield, but the stock price can crash overnight and those high dividends won't make up for the losses of the stock price. That's why this list is made out of the safest companies in the market that pay some dividends and are growing over time. When you buy a stock, it doesn't bring you any tangible value. You just hold it and wait for someone else to offer you a higher price for it. And when you make the sale, then only you profit or maybe even lose. However, I want to point out that just because one company pays a dividend doesn't make it a better investment than other companies. If the company would not pay dividends and reinvest that cash back into the company to grow it faster, maybe that's a better option. Amazon is a perfect example of that. Until today, the company hasn't paid a dime in dividends. Even after three stock splits, the Amazon stock price is $2,600. Investors clearly made a much bigger return on the stock price than if they would have received dividends. How much do you think Jeff Bezos makes per day? A hundred thousand dollars? How about a million dollars? A million dollars a day means 365 million dollars a year. But in 2019, Bezos earned 39.2 billion dollars, which means if you divide it into the number of days in a year, that will amount to 107 million dollars every 24 hours. Isn't that insane? But that's not by accident because rich people are focused on buying assets. An asset is basically something that consistently puts money back into your pocket. Unfortunately, we mostly spend our money buying liabilities such as cars, phones and houses that constantly take money out of our pocket. That's why we don't see our wealth grow as much as rich people do. In fact, some people are in so much debt that they get poorer every day, since interest is so high. That's why, here in this video, we are going to explore the 7 most important assets that the rich buy to get richer. So, make sure to listen carefully because it might be one of the most valuable things you will ever learn. Number 1. Businesses. If you have ever watched Shark Tank, you probably realize that sharks are trying to buy equity in valuable businesses, especially those with bigger potentials. The best investment you can ever make is in a thriving business. What makes a business different from all other assets is that it constantly produces something, be it a service or a product. They constantly improve their products or come up with new ones to stay ahead of their competitors. 
having a stake in a valuable business is the best way to keep your money growing and generate cash flow. Of course, for most people that's not an option, because buying a piece of a business is simply too expensive, even if you are talking about a corner shop. However, the financial system we have built over the centuries is so advanced that businesses are broken down into millions if not billions of small pieces, which allows almost anyone to own a tiny slice of any multi-billion dollar company by investing in the stock market. If you want to know more about the stock market, then check out our previous video on how to buy a stock, which link you will find in the description. Number 2. Royalties in 1999, Jeff Bezos filed a patent for a method of ordering items online. It's called one-click buying. It's a technique that allows the customers to make a purchase with the payment information that they have used previously and saved. In other words, instead of manually inputting billing and shipping information for a purchase every single time, a user can use one-click buying by using a predefined address and a credit card number to purchase the item. When you buy an app from the App Store, you don't re-enter your credit card information. You simply double-click on the side button and the software will automatically use your saved credit card. And until 2017, Apple and every other company that used this technique paid a small royalty to Jeff Bezos for using his innovation. It might sound silly to you, but that's how the world works. In order to encourage innovation, governments have set up a system of patents. Since you have worked so hard to innovate a new product or service, you will be granted an exclusive 20-year patent where no one is legally allowed to use it except you or the people you have given permission. Of course, you can use your innovation to profit from it directly, or you can license it to others for a small commission fee every time they use it and potentially earn billions, as Jeff Bezos did. It's probably one of the best passive income ideas ever. However, building a useful technology isn't that easy. That's why companies, especially in the US, file for thousands of patents every year even if they don't need it, since if someone else uses that technology, they will have to pay them a royalty. Next, mutual funds. There are two types of money problems. The first one is when you don't have enough of it. We're probably all familiar with that. But the second is when you have too much money and you have to manage it. Keeping it under your mattress isn't a good option, since inflation is going to eat it out over time. But neither keeping it in the bank is a wise option, since interest on fixed deposits is too low. However, you've got another option, which is mutual funds. Mutual funds are not index funds. Index funds blindly invest in a certain index like the S&P 500. But mutual funds carefully analyze the market and try to beat it by at least a small margin. When you invest a billion dollars, a 1% difference will make a real difference, because it will amount to $10 million. So when you are given an option with 2 or 3% higher, you are looking into making extra 20 or $30 million. That's why the rich always try to keep most of their money in mutual funds, and just watch it grow over time. But an asset doesn't necessarily mean a physical product or a royalty. It could be a skill. Of course, it's not an asset in the traditional meaning, but it is in many different ways. Having a skill that's always in demand is a constant stream of income, even if that takes some of your time. Take an example of surgeons. It's a highly complex skill that requires years of education and training. However, on the other side, it means there isn't much competition and means that you can charge a premium for your service. That's why a lot of surgeons are actually millionaires, since they are paid generously. Of course, that applies to other professions such as lawyers, physicians, and so on. However, with the rise of internet, skills such as coding, online sales, and programming languages are becoming vital and can be self-taught at home. It's a perfect option for those who are at the beginning of building their wealth. If you don't have enough to invest in the stock market, you can invest in acquiring more skills that would potentially generate much more in the long run. 
At number 5, we have real estate, which is probably most people's favorite type of asset. And that's not by accident. You can touch it, feel it, and it fulfills one of the basic human needs, shelter which means there is almost always a demand for it. Rental property is probably the best passive income asset you can have. Of course, that doesn't mean it doesn't require any hustle and capital, but it's manageable to a certain degree. What determines the quality of real estate is its location. Quite often, if it's placed not in the most suitable location, it can turn into a huge liability where you can't rent it out but still have to pay the utilities. I personally know people who have inherited properties where they don't want to live but also can't rent out since it's not a popular destination. But they still have to pay the bills to keep the house free of debt. However, if it's a desirable place, it will easily get rented out even if it's not in the best condition. But you know what's much better than real estate? Online products like music. It's super difficult to come up with good music. However, once you do it, it can continuously generate income. Take an example of Eminem. For the past 20 years, he has been at the top of the music industry. The music he has released, such as I'm Not Afraid, is still listened by lots of people across the world even though it was released back in 2010. And with the introduction of Spotify and Apple Music, the artists have gained extra streams of income. However, you're not limited to music. Online products are becoming more and more popular, such as courses, presets, apps, softwares, and a lot more. And finally, connections. It might not seem like an asset, but if you look at it from a different perspective, they could be much more valuable than you think. Great things happen when talented people from different aspects of life come together under one roof. If a business idea, Knowing the right people can make starting that business a million times easier. In fact, an advice from the right person could save you years of experience if not decades. Since we live in a world of social distancing, try networking using digital tools such as LinkedIn or other social media tools. If you want to connect with me, head to our website and shoot me a message. This list could be much longer, but I included what I personally think are the most important ones. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of our content, then hit the subscribe button and the bell besides it, so that the next video will appear right on your homepage. But if you really enjoy our videos and want some additional perks, then check out our Patreon page. Thanks for watching and until next time.